Aloha, this is Pain Magic Dragon. I'm here today to talk to you about the magic and importance of working with our spirit allies. Um, particularly, I'm going to talk about the Fae and Dragon lineages that are part of the ancestral connection that I hold through my own blood and connection to Western Europe and the British Isles, but really that there is um, uh, spirit magic in all traditional cultures, pretty much all cultures, including many that persist today outside of the new Western world revolution. And in doing this, I also want to promote an opportunity to dive deeply into your connection with your multidimensional uh, allies, your ancestors, your guides, your guardians that exist beyond this physical realm uh, in multidimensional planes that range everything from the spirits of the trees outside to Mother Earth herself to those who have passed and are you know healed and whole, uh, ancestral connections to the David realms, the angelic realms, uh, the fae realms, and uh, here we are in the year of the dragon, so what better time? And Fairy Congress is an exciting opportunity to explore this coming up in Salem, Oregon in July uh, on the 18th through the 22nd, uh, right in the middle of Ju the, the July, summer. Uh, it's a, just a beautiful time, gorgeous grounds, uh, incredible event that's going to be in its 24th year and particularly exciting year with the theme of deepening into potent intimacy, become the beloved at Fairy Congress this year. So really encourage you to hop on now um, join us uh, at the Congress in person because the richness of the opportunity to go deeply with the spiritual connections that we have, whether they're, you know, lineages that we've trained in that have saints or uh, wise masters, Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, or deities, uh, you know, in, in, uh, be it Shiva, Krishna, Lakshmi, uh, uh, in, if you are a yogi or your own personal uh, heroes and guides I mean many even recent ones who are like you know just listening to the doors like Jim Morrison people feel a spiritual connection to the being of Jim Morrison that goes beyond just a conceptual idea uh, people connect to their past grandmother and grandfathers and you know there's just uh, this is very common um, but there's not many opportunities for it and so this is a way of living that is richer, that's more connected to greater forces that reminds us of our divinity, that also breaks us out of many of the constraints of needing to be in this system of constant consumption, of uh, really um, feeling disconnected, alone, uh, not understanding, and not having mentorship, not having connection, not having uh, a deeper... Um, family that we always have had, you know? I'm here in uh, Colma, California, South San Francisco, which is a necropolis. So <laughs> the city of Colma, California, in South, the South Bay, uh, South San Francisco, just south of the city, actually, um, 25 minutes south of Golden Gate Park, is Colma. And there are six, about between six and 7,000 people in the living census, like US census. And there are 2.5 million dead people. Okay, 6,000 living people, two and a half million dead people. It's like, do the math per person, it's wild. Um, but other cultures, you know, uh, Chinese cultures here, very powerful uh, and, you know, uh, a group of folks in the Bay and, oh my gosh, the statues, the art, the, the you know, the um, uh, Hispanic people, you know, Mexican people, Catholic folks that we have Many, this altar represents a uh, connection to many uh, spiritual forces and other meaningful stuff. And it's your higher self too, but, but these people, you know, deities, those marjas, the ancestors, the whole place is lit up, you know, it's gorgeous, gorgeous offerings with flowers and, um, and it can be deep and mournful, it can be celebratory, there's lessons learned in it. I mean, when we get out of our own little boxes, our own little tiny space and time, and we see that there's this bigger connection and people have been doing this for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, uh, that um, we're all part of something much bigger. You don't even have to take it to the cosmic levels. I mean, 
most people I talk to have just had various forms of psychic phenomena, uh, inexplicable events, energetic activations, synchronicities, precognitions. Um, this just does happen, including connection with spirits at various times in people's lives. Comes out a lot in childhood, comes a lot of, in near death experiences, comes out a lot. And there's other ways that it can be cultivated though. And that's what all cultures have known. And they, instead, we fill the time and the, the, the part of ourselves that would connect with our multidimensional magic with doing other stuff like playing Candy Crush. In some places even seek to imitate it and give you, you know, and that's, and that's where these sort of agnostic cults of various hobbies and things come in. It's like, you know, you make your team into your God. And it's like, they even have their own mascot. And it's like, you know, uh, like, Let's uh, let's go uh, Vikings. And you're like singing like school Vikings, and even that has some ancestral con connection because people in Minnesota, and Minnesota Vikings football team, it, you know, usually it's like they have the people that live there. It's like the San Jose Sharks down here. It's like we have sharks in the ocean. So it's like these are spirit animals that, to some extent, we like we feel, you know, and we know, and like we want to do this stuff. We have some attempts at games, like where we want to be heroes, and so we're playing these games, is battling. We're, and we know it's a magical world, but actually we, we think that it's actually just a fantasy. We literally call magic and reality fantasy. Um, when every other culture was like, you know, if you go down to South America, everybody wants ayahuasca now. Everybody wants, you know, uh, wachuma, peyote. Uh, everybody wants these plant medicines that, you know, it's like grandmothers in Mexico have carried psilocybin mushrooms and they're gobbling them up without the spirit magic of it. And, and any of those cultures, that we take this stuff from, we'll tell you that, you know, any of the, we take meditation and we put it into science labs and do yoga and put it away. So, um, and say that it's just stretching our bodies. It's only one of the eight legged path of Astanga. It's only the physical asanas or whatever. And so, you know, this is an invitation to know that like, but you know that there's something bigger. And if there's not like, okay, fine. I don't know. Like, is there something with your higher self? Or is like, can you even just, you know, create a psychological, you know, aspect of, of, a, of a being that you can then interact with, even though it's all in your mind or something. I don't know, it's kind of a silly thing, but even that, I'm telling you, but come and open yourself. I mean, if you're listening to this, you're probably, I'm preaching to the choir. But the, but the, the point of this, and I'll, I'll, I'll now I'll wrap it up at the Fairy Congress, the Fairy Congress has been going on for 24 years. Here we have actual elders who know this stuff deeply. This is not a fun and games festival, although there's tons of fun and there's tons of games. It's super lighthearted. There's, you know, singing, dancing, drumming. I mean, there's like, there's all kinds of silly traditions and rituals, but at the heart of it, I say it's not fun and games because what's, although it is a joyful and blissful and free and liberated experience, it's really about the, the shamanic journey. It's really about, you know, holding these offerings and, and, and bridging the gap between above and below, between, you know, this is, I used to be in politics and, you know, as a politics, a Congress among humans. This is a fairy Congress. This is a Congress with multidimensional allies and human allies and human allies who are practitioners of this stuff. So here you're gonna find your tribe. You're gonna find the people who are, who are beautiful and people who go to fairy Congress come back. I produce my own events. I, you know, I sit on a couple of board of directors kind of stuff, but like mostly like I do my own because I just want it to be super high quality and I just want it to be what I like, which is magical and powerful and wild and weird. I volunteer my time weekly to sit on the Fairy Council, which is like the governing board of all volunteer producing this board of directors thing for this annual event. It's been going on for two and a half decades. Uh, there's, it, this year in particular is incredible. We have the theme of deepening into potent intimacy, become the beloved. And there's gonna be, I'm gonna be leading uh, deep interpersonal relating workshops along with other presenters um, where we're gonna go really, really to profound levels of how do we interact with our own allies as beloved? Like, can we be, you know, multidimensional, uh, uh, multidimensionally deeply, deeply in connection and uh, in this, uh, you know, potent, intimate way. And it is a potent, intimate container. You know, we've got, uh, usually there's between one and 200 people there. So it's more of a retreat than a festival, but now is the time to sign up. I'll have the link in the bio. I'll be there, it's right in Salem. There's a million more reasons why this is so rich, meaningful, fun, it's a life-changing thing. Come to Fairy Congress, and even if you can't, let's continue on the multidimensional path with our allies.